Well, this is the communicators on C-SPAN, and we are in Las Vegas for the annual Consumer Electronics Show International, now known as CES International. And this is one of the exhibits here at Samsung. It's next to Kobe. There are literally thousands of exhibitors and thousands of uh, people here at the convention center in Las Vegas. Well, one of the things we decided to do this year in our coverage is talk with a reporter, or actually follow a reporter around as he toured and see the, see the uh, CES through his eyes. Troy Wolverton is with the San Jose Mercury News. Mr. Wolverton, how often have you been coming to CES and uh, what's its importance? Well, gosh, I've probably been coming to CES for, uh, I think, seven of the last eight years, something like that. Uh, and its importance is that it is uh, basically kind of the, the showcase for, uh, or the centerpiece for the technology industry. It's where uh, many of the major companies come to show off their latest and greatest products and uh, you get a sense of what's going to be on store shelves later in the year. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a place where um, consumers can kind of get a glimpse of where things are going. But the real import is that this is where the manufacturers try to sell to the retailers what they should have on their store shelves later. And what's the importance of the San Jose Mercury News to the technology industry? What's the connection? Well, the Mercury News is in the heart of Silicon Valley, and uh, our focus in our business section has long been on technology. In fact, it's basically what we cover is, is technology. Uh, so I'm the personal technology columnist for the Merck, and uh, that's my bent. I, I uh, try to keep an eye on all things consumer technology. Do you find that Washington and Silicon Valley are on two different planets? <laughs> uh, I think that's probably fair to say. Um, you know, I think that the ties are probably getting closer. Uh, there's a lot of more interaction these days than there was before. But you know, I think in, in many ways, and for a long time, folks in Silicon Valley didn't really care or want to know what was going on in Washington. And you know, likewise, I think the folks in Washington have not have always have, have sometimes been tone deaf to what's going on in Silicon Valley or with the technology industry. When you talk to uh, tech companies in Silicon Valley, what do they say about Washington? Oh gosh! Uh, I, you you know, can report. <laughs> you know, I think I think it kind of depends on which companies you're talking about. Um, uh, you know, I think in some cases, um, technology executives want Washington to stay the hell out, um, to keep it hands off. Um, in some cases, technology companies want certain steps from government, so you know they'd like to have more spectrum available for uh, the mobile phone industry. Um, in some cases, they want, you know, again, for Washington to uh, to not regulate. So, you know, there was a big uproar over the SOPA legislation. Um, there's been um, uh, uproar over, you know, various kind of things regarding whatever privacy or, or whatever. I mean, it's kind of a divided message, I think, coming out of Silicon Valley because it depends on the company and depends on the issue. In some cases, they want government to do more uh, action, and in some cases, they want government to do less. Well, Troy Wolverton, Give us a preview of the tour you're taking us on today. So I was hoping to go to a number of the uh, big company, technology companies, um, big electronics companies. So I think we're going to stop by Sony, and we may stop by Sharp and LG, Panasonic, maybe Intel as well, and get a kind of a flavor of some of the things that these companies are showing off here at the show. Well, let's go. So here's Sony here. So yeah, it's kind of it's very striking to see how these companies, and it's not just Sony, I mean, LG, Samsung, everybody else, um, has really been uh, flogging 3D for the last three or four years, and basically nobody's mentioning it this year. Well, first, what we have here, uh, we have our four pillars, so we have design, display, camera, and connectivity. So we can definitely start with the design itself. So what it is, it has an omni-balanced design, so it's perfect symmetri perfectly symmetric all around, so no matter how you turn the device, it just feels comfortable in your hand. And you can view the content no matter how the device is actually tilted. So that's great in terms of design with, with Sony. In terms of the display, it has a five-inch display, and that display is powered by what we call Mobile Bravia Engine 2. Mobile, Mobile Bravia Engine 2, and that technology we acquired from Sony uh, Televisions. So the same power technology that powers our televisions, the same technology that's implemented in our mobile devices now. Phenomenal. It has two gigs of RAM, a quad-core processor, Snapdragon. So it's definitely a powerful device. Extremely LTE. powerful. 
LT, of course. And is it out on the market yet? It's not available on the market yet, and date and uh, availability will be announced in time to come. So besides the camera, are there other highlights of the phone? Absolutely. One, which is probably my favorite, is the NFC uh, technology, one-touch technology. Right. So with this phone now, with the NFC technology, we're able to transfer content to another NFC-enabled device just by simply tapping it. And that technology, we're calling that technology one-touch. For example, let's say I go into Walkman, I hit play, and I want to get that music now on my headset. So instead of connecting it through the wire cable, I simply pick up my NFC-enabled headset, and I tap here. Uh -huh. So as you can see, it's going to connect. It's automatically paired. So I never have to go into the Bluetooth settings, find a device, and pair it. It right. pairs and transfers and streams the music directly. And does that work with any NFC-enabled device or just Sony products? Just Sony products, yes. Yeah. So we have other devices on the other side. So we have our one-touch one, our one speaker ball. Uh -huh. Same concept. I will simply take my music, tap the ball. The music will then stream over. Right. Tap it again. It'll then disconnect and come back to my phone. Right. I know Samsung has a similar technology, the tap technology, yes. but it sounds like it's not going to work with the Samsung technology. No, it, it wouldn't work with Samsung. We actually, we made it ours in, right. in our way. And another thing with the one-touch technology, we actually took it to a step further. For example, you're at home with the family, you have content on your phone that you would like to display on your big screen TV. So what do you do now? You pick up your NFC-enabled TV remote, Take your, your device, tap the remote, and it automatically transfers that content to your TV. And of course, uh, being able to use the slide, the slide chair. What we have here is one of two new sizes that we've introduced for 2013. Okay. Last year, late last year, we launched the 84-inch uh, right over there. Right. And this year, what we're doing is introducing smaller sizes to make it more um, sort of kind of like accessible, right. price point-wise, and also make it easy for folks to put them in different rooms right. and for different applications right. and things like that. We have been involved in 4K for quite a while. Right. We have a saying called from the lens to the living room. And that's because a majority of the cameras being used to capture 4K content are in fact Sony cameras. As a matter of fact, three out of four movie theaters currently use 4K projectors from Sony. Right. So essentially people have been paying $12, $15 to watch upconverted 2K content on, into 4K at the local movie theater. Right. So we are uniquely positioned to offer the technology to the end user at home. And what we're showing over here is an example of native 4K content that's captured. And this could essentially be you using your own 4K camera capturing the stuff and showing it on this here. And what size is the screen here? This screen is 65 inches. 65, and you're doing the 84, mm -hmm. the, 65, the 65, and, and the 55. 55. The okay. 55 is right over there. Right. And uh, when are those available? We are shooting for mid to late spring. Mid to late spring. And do you know what price points are going to be? No pricing has been announced yet. Okay. Yes. But any, they will be. Any range or they will be competitive, but no pricing has been announced yet. Okay. Um, and so the idea is that you're going to be able to get these down. Obviously, a lower price point. The first one, the 84 inch, started off at what, $25,000? $25,000, exactly, right. yes. Uh, one of the things we're stressing here at the show is that the benefit of a 4K television is that everything looks great, right. be it 2K or 4K. That said, because we own a movie studio as well, we are leveraging that relationship. We're leveraging the content that we have access to right. to deliver 4K content to the users at home. Currently, as we speak, anyone who gets the 84 inch television gets a video player. It comes preloaded with 10 full-length 4K movies, right. including The Amazing Spider-Man, as well as independent movies and shorts, and what we call eye candy, great content that looks visually appealing, like stuff like this. Right. It's available to the users at no charge to them. Right. At some point in time, somewhere during the uh, second half of the year, we will officially unveil a video delivery system or a content delivery system right. that will enable for folks to have access to 4K content. And is that going to be delivered to directly to the TV, like via Netflix or something, or like a streaming video service, or is it a download service, or? So currently, folks who get the 84 inch get the player. Right. And as and when 4K content becomes available, Sony sends them a Blu-ray data disc. They uh -huh. put it in and they transfer the content off the disc onto their player. Okay. Um, as to the mode of transport or the mode of distribution, nothing has been announced just yet. Um, we, you know, it is possible that it could be streaming or it could still be physical media, but nothing has been announced yet. But aren't you guys putting out a, a series of 4K DVD or Blu-ray DVDs as well? No. So um, what we have are Blu-ray discs that were mastered in 4K. Okay. They're still 2K 1080p, oh, okay. but they were mastered. Either they were shot and or mastered in 4K. So they're down to 2K. Exactly. Yes. Okay. But you will be. 
I guess I misunderstood. Yeah, I thought you guys were going to be offering 4K Blu-ray DVD. When, in the summer, we will offer a 4K distribution service. Okay. That will be true native 4K. Okay. Right. What you can get today in a retail store is essentially a 2K Blu-ray movie that may have been shot and or mastered in 4K. Okay. So in this tour of Sony, what have you learned? Um, well, they're obviously pushing 4K, which is what, uh, what is we 4K? kind of expect. What is 4K? What 4K is, that? is a very high resolution television. Is that 4,000 pixel? Basically, so um, right now an HD television is um, generally defined as one that has 1080p. So what 1080p means is that you've got about 1,080 lines of resolution by about 2,000, it's, it's called columns of resolution. Um, on a 4K TV, you have double that. So you have double the uh, lines of resolution and you have double the columns of resolution. So you get about, about 4,000 columns of resolution um, on a 4K TV. It's actually the resolution, because both sides are double, both the, uh, the length and the columns, you actually get four times the resolution of a regular television. Um, so it's useful on a big screen TV. Um, most experts will say that it's useful on like a 60 inch and above TV, that below 60 inches you really can't tell the difference. But on a large screen TV, and particularly if you're sitting up close to a large screen TV, you can definitely tell the difference. There, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a display on the other side of this wall here where they were demonstrating um, like newspaper text on a screen. And they were showing what it looks like on a 1080p uh, large screen TV and what it looks like on a, on a 4K. TV, uh, large screen TV, and you can definitely tell the difference. I mean, th there's it's much sharper and clearer on a 4K TV than it is on a 1080p TV. Um, th the problem right now is that 4K TVs are extraordinarily expensive. I mean, they are. The, Sony came out with its first 4K TVs this past year, and like Daryl was saying, they, they started off at like $25,000. Um, so they're hoping to get those prices down, and they probably will come down. But you know, you're still probably talking about. Um, several times the cost of a regular 1080p television at the same size for a 4K version. The other problem is, as we were kind of talking about in our conversation, there's just no content out there. So Sony is distributing with its 4K TVs a hard drive that has 10 movies on it. Well, I don't know about you, but I watch a lot more than 10 movies uh, in my regular viewing habits. And so you're not going to get any of your latest television shows in 4K. Um, you're almost certainly not going to get the vast majority of the latest uh, movies in 4K. Um, you know, your streaming video services aren't coming in in 4K. There's just nothing out there in 4K right now. And so Sony's trying to, to help spur that along. And, and as Daryl talked about, you know, Sony has um, a lot of the movies that are shot these days are actually shot in 4K. They're just distributed to consumers in 2K and in, in 1080p resolution. Um, so you know they're they're hoping to kind of start moving the ball so that you get more of those out in 4K. But it's going to be a big process. Um, and you know, frankly, I have my doubts that they're going to put much out in 4K unless there's a sizable market of consumers out there that are going to watch this content. I mean, why would they take go through the process and, and expense, because there is going to be a, a considerable expense in distributing this stuff in 4K, if nobody's out there to buy it? I mean, that's kind of what they learned with 3D. I mean, 3D was a thing that they pushed for the last several years. It turned out the consumers weren't terribly interested in, in 3D. And so there's just, you know, it's kind of this chicken and egg thing. There's not a lot of 3D content out there. Consumers aren't interested, so they're not putting out more 3D content. I mean, it's. 4K is going to be even worse because it's um, in the sense that it's only applicable to big size televisions and the market for big size televisions, while growing and while significant, it's like 20% now, is still a fraction of the total market. Troy Wolverton, how do you view Sony in the tech stratosphere? You know, Sony, uh, I think for a long time, was considered to be the pinnacle of technology. I mean, they were the, uh, the diamond company but they've really been knocked off in, in recent years. Um, you know, Sony uh, was the dominant game company um, five years ago. Uh, today, they're in third place. Um, if you look at music players, Sony was the dominant player with their Walkman line of uh, players. And then they got knocked off by, by the iPod. Um, you know, they're, they're not a huge player in smartphones. Um, they, and you know, it's funny, I, I um, was at the Samsung conference yesterday, and really, in, in many ways, Samsung has become the Sony of today. I mean, Samsung dominates a lot of the markets that it's in, including smartphones. Um, and that's something that you might have been able to say about Sony 5, 10, 15 years ago. That's not something you can say about Sony today. 
This is the communicators on C-SPAN, and we are following Troy Wolverton of the San Jose Mercury News on his tour at CES International in Las Vegas. This is a brand new. This is a brand new system from Lenovo. It will be available out in the spring. It's 11 inch. It's called Yoga because right. one of the interesting things about it is not only does it look like a full PC, but it's an ultrabook, so it's super thin and light. But it also has full touch capability. So I can use it like a tablet, right? And then if I really want to use it like a tablet, I can take it and I can convert it into a full tablet mode. And when you do that, the keyboard turns off. The right? keyboard does turn off on the bottom, so I can rest it on my lap and I don't have to worry about any kind of input happening. And I've got my full access to my applications, etc., just like this. So it's a right. full PC. If I want to bring it back. I uh, just convert it back up, and it goes back into PC mode. My, my keyboard will turn back on. I can type. So my recollection is that the keyboard turns on whatever is um, more than 100, or narrower than 180 degrees. Right? Correct. Correct. Right. correct, correct, correct. What's great about this, too, is you can also put it in something they call tent mode, where I can have it like this, and you can see the screen automatically right. reconfigures. So if I'm watching a movie, and one of the, the problems I have with my you know tablets is you put them on your lap, and you constantly have to be looking down. This you can just prop up. So you prop it on the bed sitting next to you or on the tabletop. Right. Or even if you want to show off like photos and things like that, you have a full tablet interface just propped up for you. Right. So that is called the Lenovo Yoga. Again, it'll be available later this year in the spring time frame. Right. So that's going to be like a, something like an eight hundred or seven hundred dollar price point. Is that right? Uh, it should start at seven ninety nine. Yep. Correct. A different one. So this is, if I want to have more of a tablet usage, this one was actually designed for business, but it'll be available for all. And if I want, I can have it as a full PC, so it has to have a full keyboard, Intel Core processor, so full PC performance. Right. But then for this, if I want to take it as a tablet, I can just remove the tablet part, and as you see, extremely light, thin, full PC though performance. Everything's built right into this part of it, right. so I have all the great benefits. I have Windows 8, full desktop mode, etc., but also as a tablet. And then, if I want to, I can just put it back together. One of the also interesting things is I can put it in the opposite way. Right. So I can have it as a tablet facing out. And when you do that, you also get the extra battery life that's built into the base. Exactly, exactly. So then I can just carry it around like this. Plus, my keyboard is completely protected because my right. keyboard is inside. But it, the way this one works, if I recall, is that it splits the battery usage between the, the screen and the and the base, Correct. so that you detach it, you only get what six hours out of the top, but together it gets ten. Is that right? Correct. You're exactly right. right. So I get the battery life built in for both of these. So again, when I'm using it as a PC, I get that extra battery because it's built into the base. Right. Right. As well as then just a full tablet as well. Right. Okay. And this one though is going to be what twelve ninety nine or eleven ninety nine? Is that right? Um, the pricing I don't think has been officially set by Lenovo, but probably will be in that range. And it's going to be available what, first quarter or first half? Um, this should be available at the end of next month. Oh, okay. Okay. So very soon. Okay. Okay. See, and then a full touch. So here in the booth, how many different convertible designs are you guys showing off? We have about 40 different convertible designs. Um, there is over 140 different Ultrabooks available on the market today. Right. right. So from a category... But not all those are convertibles. Not right? all those are convertibles. Right. Correct. Right. Um, but 140 uh, of them, 40 of them will have touch capabilities. And then the convertible part of them, we're showing at least, I think, about a dozen of those that uh -huh. will have different types of converting. So whether or not it's a detachable design, right. there's some that twist and flip, or some that fold over. Right. So many, many different types, depending so on sorry, your usage. So about 40 that, that have touch capabilities, but correct. only about a dozen that are actual convertibles? Uh, that we have, correct. That oh, we're you showing have here on display. Correct. correct. Right. What I think is, is very interesting happening in the marketplace today, which is very different from the PC market in the in previous times, was you really have to take a look at these and decide which is the best for your lifestyle. So you really have a lot of choice now. So maybe I think, hey, I really like this tablet type of usage, and only occasionally would I be typing things. But right. well, for that, this was probably a really great type of model for you. Um, the other ones that we showed you where, hey, maybe I do want a regular PC, and then only in some times do I want to take it into a tablet type of mode. This may be the right type of design. Right. Or you have this tweener, what I'll call it there, where it's de fully detachable, so I can take it as a tablet, right. but also have it set up as a full PC. Right. So lots of choices for consumers today. You really just have to take a look at what, right, what is the right one for your lifestyle. Awesome.
what actually works best for you. Right. And so some of the same experimentation that we're seeing on the notebook side or the portable side, we're also seeing on the desktop side too, right? Exactly. Some interesting things that are happening on the desktop side. So we can take a look at them. They're actually making desktop all-in-one systems, which you may have been familiar with. Right. These are full PC capabilities built into a, really like a giant type of screen. Right. So all you see is the screen and typically a keyboard and mouse. Right. Not only do they have touch capability, but they also have capability to be used portably, right? So you're not always tethered to a uh, an outlet, an electrical right. outlet. So they have, got a a, they have a built-in right. battery. Now the battery only lasts a couple of hours, right. but it's really designed for the usage where you can take it down and use it as I typical all-in-one PC for my productivity, et cetera. But then when I want to have fun with it, I can take it around the house. So if I want to watch a movie and set it up in a different room, or what we're showing is a really great usage model is a new take on family game night. Right. So you actually can convert these into, and they have games built into them like Monopoly, uh, air hockey, et cetera, that I can then play with my whole family. So I can bring it, put it on my kitchen table, don't have to worry about dice, losing the dice, or losing all the different things. Everything's built right into the, the PC. So this is a Monopoly designed by uh, Electronic Arts, is that right? For Hasbro, right, for, for Hasbro. Hasbro, correct. Right. Excuse me, you're okay. And what we're looking at here is a system called Lenovo Horizon. It's a 27-inch display. Okay. And it is full Windows 8. So it is a full Windows 8 PC. You can use it with a keyboard and mouse or use it with the touch interface that you see. So again, your standard Windows 8 interface that I can use. Now, it also has a built-in battery. So I want to make it portable. I can take it around my house. So for that, what I could do is I could take it over to my kitchen table and I just fold it down. How heavy is that thing? Uh, it's less than 20 pounds, so it's portable. It's not something you would take with you on vacation or anything like that, that in your but it's really designed for your house. Right. And what you'll see here, this is a multi-touch display mode. So I have access to my photos and my video. One of the interesting things, I also have access to games. Uh -huh. And I show you just different various games that you can have. One of them we choose is Monopoly. So again, if I wanted to play Monopoly with the family, I can have them put away their screens, and we all gather around our table and look at this screen. Right. And it's really the, the exact same Monopoly game that you know and love, but done electronically. So a little bit more fun. So here we have the game, and we're going to play. Will the battery last on this thing? About a couple of hours. Okay. So under full charge. So again, really designed for that portability aspect of it. Okay. And now we're ready to roll. So interesting thing here. So here's my dice, but because it's touch. Oh, you can shake the dice up. I can shake the dice up and then it rolls and then it'll automatically move and play it for me. And then ask me, do I want to buy? Right, because I landed on it and I say, yes, I'd like to buy. So it's really, it's the Monopoly game you know and love. Okay, but so can I put uh, $500 in the free parking pot? <laughs> it's the standard Monopoly rules for, uh, this, for this version. That's, that's how I play, I've always played it that way. So now it's your turn. Okay, so I, oh shoot, I forgot to shake up the dice. There you go. Okay, so I get to be the iron. You get to be the iron. Oh, thank God I'm just visiting. You're just visiting, so you're gonna end your turn. So then if you wanna, Okay, I want to try shaking the dice this time. Oh, electric company. I like the utilities. I think they're a good buy. Now it's your okay, turn. Okay, so my turn. There you go. But well, the nice thing is it didn't go off the board. That's right. And you know what? I don't have to worry about money. Right, the money floating around everywhere. I don't have to worry about all the different cards. It's all done electronically. I will buy Virginia. Oh, you're gonna buy Virginia. That's usually a good buy too. Now, how is it? Uh, can you man, uh, can you mortgage all your properties? You can do everything that you can do with the normal Monopoly game. So okay. yes, correct. Okay. So this is almost like uh, what Microsoft's vision of Surface was, the original Surface several years ago, tabletop computing, basically. Correct. And that was done for more like commercial type of applications. Right. This is really an all-in-one PC, right? So I don't want to make this, this is not designed to play games. That's one of the benefits of this. Right. This is designed to be your all-in-one PC. You put this in your kitchen, your family room, et cetera. It has lots of storage right. space in it because it is a larger type. And again, you've got the 27-inch touchpad. So full all-in-one PC productivity apps, and then you get the added benefit of the portability and having to be able to play games, maybe a different way with your family. And so this will, is this already out on the market or no? Um, this will be available shortly. So And what's the price point going to be? They haven't announced all the pricing on that yet, so details are still be seen for this. Okay. 
this is running, obviously, on an Intel chip. What uh, what chip is this running? Um, this is in a, an Intel Core processor. So our state-of-the-art performance will go into the system. So our third-gen Intel Core processor. So again, you get full, C, full PC, full performance, state-of-the-art from Intel, all right. built in. And then I exit the game, and it'll take me back to this screen, and then I can go right back into my Windows storage. Windows. Windows display. Okay. Now you, you were talking, I guess, um, uh, you guys have been talking about perceptual computing too, is that right? Yeah, we have great. So one of the things that you're seeing here for consumers, really changing the paradigm of PC is using the touch interface. But what if we take that a step further, right? So what if your PC, right, you interfaced or you're interacted with it more like you interact how we interact, right? We use our hand gestures, right? We use our face. So we've got some interesting things happening with facial recognition and also with gesture recognition. Part of our work under perceptual computing, which is just the name that we put to tie all those technologies together. the idea of natural interfaces. Exactly. Natural. So this is our new perceptual technology. This is shows you how you interact more naturally with your system. Right. And this one is kind of an interesting demo. As you can see, it's so this has got a, a, du a dual camera, a 3D camera that's on it. It's got a dual camera, and what this is showing is, pretend we're doing a video conference with like a Skype application. Uh -huh. So say we're in this crowded, crazy environment like we are today, it can take us and cut out and filter out automatically. It puts in a, a, a virtual green screen behind us right. and fills in the back. So say you're in a coffee shop and you want to do a video conference with somebody, but you don't want them to see everybody around you because it's distracting. Right. This will automatically filter Suck out your battery. The, well, <laughs> yes, it is. We have to be plugged in, but um, it's been running for a while. I'm sure. But it actually filters out that background, so we can have more of a natural interaction with each other, and not have to worry about any kind of background distractions. So that's this one, where again it puts in that virtual kind of um, augmented reality world, and it takes you out of what you're in and puts you in a different space. And obviously, with the backgrounds, you can configure those to be as much as you want or to be as plain as you want. And so this capability. Is this built into the chips? Is this something that's added on because of the camera? Is this something that's in the... In the Correct. Uh, well, right now, it's, it requires an add-on camera. This is from Creative. Right. Um, not available yet. will be available shortly. Um, so you'll have a whole suite of applications you'll be able to do. In fact, we'll show you another in just a second. This is just one... Um, application that you can run with this. Um, in the future, this camera technology will be built right into the PC itself. Right. So but this is basically like a connect camera for the PC. It's actually, it's interesting that you say that. It's similar to that technology, and I'll show you in a second why it's different. If we look at this demo right here, this is showing your, actually your hand was, your hand was great there. So what this is showing is I can then take my hand and make it part of the action. So just using regular gestures, I can interact with what I have on film. Now, you brought up Connect as an example. Right. What, the, what this is and how this is different is, this is designed for that six inch to about a foot and a half right. difference. So right. when it's I'm really right in front of it, right. plus it can do the preciseness of my actual fingers, it can actually show you my fingers and I can actually control things down to the fingertip level as opposed to the other game consoles where they're in more of a broad gesture perspective and you don't have the accuracy down to a fingertip perspective right this will do that so we're just showing here a little fun game you can actually collect the coins and you can throw them you can do a bunch of different things with them um, but other applications will be come up with like 3d modeling so we'll be able to take a 3d model and I'll be able to turn it with my just my hand gestures right so instead of having to use some kind of system like input like a keyboard and mouse or something like that this makes it much more natural for you to interact with your PC but is this something that's um being developed as part of like an Ultrabook? Do you have to have an Ultrabook to run this, or, or what, what's the... Uh... It does require a lot of processing, so we do recommend that you do have an Ultrabook or an Intel Core processor, because what's going on behind there is a lot of technology to get to make this happen in real time. Right. So yes, you do a need a really power. a lot of processing power to make that happen, which is great, because it's really what Intel is, is known for. Right. But Intel actually works also with these other companies to make sure that these technologies will get built into systems eventually, and also the underlying enable technologies to make this happen. So we showed you here too, which gives you kind of a, a touch interface or a hand gesture and then a, more of a facial recognition. Right. Uh, we're also working on voice technologies as well. So right. be able to talk to your PC um, as you do right today. Now you say with your phone, um, but that's also coming as well. So be able to then say, hey, open this application, do natural user dictation into that. Um, so a lot of things to make it more like we interact with each other right. as opposed to interacting with the machine. Troy Wolverton. 
San Jose Mercury News. What have you learned here at CES? Well, I think what we've learned is that you're seeing a lot of experimentation from uh, consumer electronics manufacturers. Uh, whether it's experimenting with 4K TVs, whether it's experimenting with new types of computer designs, whether it's experimenting with new features and functions for a mobile phone, um, there's a lot of experimentation going on. Not necessarily like new, completely mind-blowing innovations, but what we are seeing is a lot of trying to build on what we've done before and try to make these devices more useful for us. Troy Wolverton, San Jose Mercury News, the personal technology reporter. The communicators has been with him for a day here at CES International in Las Vegas. And our program from CES will continue next week on the communicators.